All right, so last time I was under the van, I noticed that the uh, belts appeared to be original. They're all AC Delco parts, from what I could determine. And the uh, pulleys on them are fairly worn. So uh, I decided to replace the belts. I'll be doing a video on that, quite possibly today. And then another thing that you might notice under these vehicles is that uh, they leak a lot of oil. I was kind of surprised. Like that oil filter has only been on there for like uh, a thousand miles and it's uh, collecting oil. So there's uh, the oil pan gasket that originally came with these vehicles obviously wasn't really up to par. So we've got to take the oil pan off of this thing and fix that. And then you're laying on your back pondering, how am I going to do this? You're going to read an annual. Otherwise you're going to screw it up like the first people that did it. So there's that. There's uh, an arm here. I don't know if this thing is an idler arm or whatever it's called. But there's a grease fitting on this. When my parents owned it, they had to get uh, this part replaced because it was worn. And your suspension gets all wiggly and you get a death wobble. But there's a grease fitting on this thing hiding up. I don't know if we can find it or not. That's the problem, right? No one ever goes up there to grease it. So uh, you can buy a grease hose that swings down. It clips onto here somewhere, so we'll do that. If you have a pickup truck with a skid plate or something, these really don't get greased. So we're gonna do that. And uh, I think there's one other job under here we gotta do while we're here. What is eluding me? So uh, we'll see if I can remember that. Otherwise, take a look. One of the viewers asked me about changing the suspension or the uh, transmission in these vehicles when they're converted to a road truck. I guess his uh, service tech said that uh, it wasn't going to be easy to remove the uh, cross member for the transmission. So let's go crawl back there. Oh, now I remember what I wanted to say. So the last people that lifted this thing up use a two post hoist and grabbed it on an angle. They kind of they bent the frame rails a little bit on all four corners of the vehicle. So that's kind of sloppy. Why would they do that? Because they're lazy. They didn't want to uh, reach in past the uh, water tanks. So that's not cool. So if someone's going to lift up your van, ask them to lift it properly. Do it on the, the flat spots of the vehicle. Like this thing could have slid off of the hoist and killed somebody when they were working on it. So, I don't think that's good for anybody. Ah, inching our way back. So, let's see if we can see the uh, cross member. I can't see the viewfinder right now, but those are the uh, bolts that need to be removed. You can see, let me wiggle my way around here bolts fairly long right they're like five inches long and they're right up against the water tank looks like uh, one might rub through the tank eventually so the tanks are held by some uh, threaded rod so if you undid these you could drop the tanks down with uh, some ratchet straps I would imagine but obviously like this is a fresh water tank on this side Let's see if we can see where the water fill comes from so that's that there that corrugated line is the water fill it comes from the door column that's I think the city water fill there one of them is the city water fill and one of them is the draw for the pump and the drain so that's on the uh, fresh water side so I would think you could drop this uh, thing down pretty easily now the other side it has like a combined black water, gray water tank. I think that uh, there's a seam in between them somewhere. There's only one tank on this side and it's like the whole expanse. Actually, maybe not. Might be a seam over there. I can't tell from here. I think from what I've seen, they were possibly integral tanks. So anyway, if you wanted to drop down the front tank, which is around the suspension, that is your drain out to your main pipe. 
Well, obviously fluid needs to get into it somewhere, somehow. I'll flip the camera up above. Maybe you can see. It. I'm not going to be able to see what I see, what the camera sees rather. Anyway, hopefully something is obvious in there. They have to be able to build these things, so there's got to be a bit of uh, flexibility in the tubing. I don't think that's going to be overly helpful. But anyway, you'll need to be able to lower those tanks down fairly far to get those uh, bolts out. Otherwise, like, it's only binding up the, suspe the uh, transmission, the width of the cross member. You might be able to bring it down on an angle, but obviously it'd be a lot more labor to do that, right? Because you'd have to have a couple people holding on to it so they don't drop it or anybody get hurt. So uh, that's that. If you've got a road track and you want to take the tanks out. Otherwise, the other thing that I wanted to talk about was the uh, oil cooler lines. So these lines here, you get two issues. One, that the uh, it leaks here where there's a little gasket. That's pretty easy to fix with a van being two-wheel drive. You can also replace the uh, hoses because the hoses are known to leak where they switch from the steel line to the flexible. Looks like my transmission lines are leaking up here because the lines are wet. There's no real reason for them to be wet going all the way up there. So yippee, lots of work we've got to do on this thing. So anyway, thanks for watching. As you can see, there's going to be some videos. Winter is coming up here, so I'm not sure how much of that I'm going to get done. I've got the oil pan gasket here. I've got the grease fitting for the uh, arm available here. And uh, for the uh, gasket for the oil cooler, I've got that. That's like a five minute job. Other than you lose a bit of oil, I used to be ready to clean that up. So. Uh, over the next little while, you'll probably see a few videos pop up for the vehicle. Then we're going to go into hibernation and uh, we'll come back out in spring. So thanks for watching.